Hello there and welcome to Travels with Jordy. If this is your first visit, my name is Peter Knowles and I live here on this classic wooden motor cruiser in Victoria, British Columbia with my lovely girlfriend Andrea and the loving memory of my pup Jordy, all about fixing it and others up for some pretty ambitious cruising. If that's the sort of thing you might find interesting, please consider sticking around and subscribing. I'd love to have you. With any luck, this is the last of the old intro, and I'll think of something clever to do next week, which hopefully will involve Andrea, because she's so keen to be part of it. Anyway, uh, you don't know yet, but uh, all these bits on the cabin top are going to be made in the next 15, 20 minutes. And uh, we've just returned from Genoa, having made them and about to install them on MV Zephyrus. And, uh, I think that's all I'll give you. Hello there and welcome back to the shed and welcome back oh, to these beauties. Um, this week's going to be a bit of a change. Um, many of you in comments last week suggested why am I building this square monolith of a upper helm and it's very true. I'd always thought oh I would do something swoopy and interesting then but you caught me out and definitely I'm going to redesign that. Uh, I got the geometry for wherever everything's going to be, but the actual shape of it will be something more creative, which I can't imagine right this minute. Uh, so we're going to deviate a little bit this week, and we're going to jump on a project that I have um, owed doing or promised doing for Lady Zephyrus for months, and that's uh, some sliding doors to go under the bed in her aft cabin, and uh, we're going to whip those up here today and tomorrow, and uh, install them aboard Zephyrus, which will vastly tidy up her underbed storage area. So that's what we're up to today. Unbelievable rainstorm here today. In fact, I think it may be hail. Whew. It's coming down. Okay, well anyway, I've cleaned up. To get ready for this project, let's get some wood out and some thinking out and I don't even know if you can hear me. And a few minutes later, the sun is out. Love it. Okay, so I've figured out I'm gonna be able to make the whole thing, uh, or at least all the panels out of this one big piece. Basically, we're looking at uh, three panels. It's a 74 and a quarter inch opening, so three panels of 25 will just slightly overlap. And these are rail and style panels, so they will have um, solid mahogany uh, rail and style, and they'll be uh, mahogany uh, quarter inch plywood centers. Uh, so they'll be routed out for that. So I've just figured out the various sizes here I'm starting to think about the track at the bottom. We'll talk about that in a little bit uh, But basically uh, the, Ironically, they'll be 25 by 25 exactly uh, So six pieces uh, 25 and I've decided I'm gonna make the rail and cell two and a quarter And that's because of the amount of meat I need out of here that uses up most of the wood and it's reasonably sizable for a rather large panel so two and a quarter out of the 25 gives me 20 and a half so let's cut up some pieces and because I order my wood rough cut on the ends because I always know I'm gonna rip it into something we'll begin by uh, just cleaning up this edge but first Safety glasses and dust collection. I am sick and tired of all the dust blowing around in here and as a result I won't need a respirator. And now to rip to two and a quarter. Okay, so I have six rails 
and six styles and now I need to do is route a groove in the edge uh, the exact thickness of the mahogany plywood I'm going to put in there and while well, I'm not going to route it I'm going to rip it with multiple cuts with the table saw and that's because it's um, nominally quarter inch plywood but it's actually slightly smaller because it's metric and I don't have a rotor bit that size. So I'll set the blade to 3 eighths of an inch or some are very close to that. And some of you may have seen me do this before. I'll begin by just making the first uh, rip right down the center or as close to the center as possible. And uh, even if I've missed, it won't matter because I'm gonna make a subsequent rips in both directions and that will guarantee that in time it is perfectly centered. I do not imagine I need goggles for this because the blade is completely concealed. However, I'm gonna try and work on a habit. I don't know about this dust collection, it's blowing up into the air, it's as if I have the vacuum in reverse. Okay, so I've moved the blade over just so slightly, so uh, two more passes and it will widen uh, the gap, hopefully, to right on uh, the plywood. Let's go have a look-see. This is the back side of the plywood, don't worry, it's nice mahogany on the other side. Beauty! All right, let's make the rest like that. All right, so it's hardly cabinetry, but um, this rail and style arrangement is going to be held together with screws. Um, now I need very long screws, and I don't have very long screws, except for some deck screws. I'm not feeling good about it, but I'm not feeling bad about it. It'll be just fine. Okay, so I can work off the edge of the bench here. I'm just gonna make myself a bit of a stop here. And that will mean I have something to work against. So this is pretty straightforward. It's, uh, it's glue. Now I am gonna glue the panels in, but not with any great regularity I'm just going to kind of slop some glue in the bottom and whatever happens happens I am however going to glue the rails to the styles okay now this is where I do not want to get mixed up because the Currently I'm working on this sideways, that is up and that is down, or vice versa. I don't know if you heard that, but a big old seal just came up to see me here. Anyway, he's long gone now. Okay, so I have to make sure I put my panels in sideways. Yeah. And here.
there we go, first panel made. I'm just finishing the glue up and uh, Come in, Chris. three minutes. Okay. Perfect. Should be nice and flat in the morning. And good morning. Well, we'll see how these look. Ooh. Very nice and very flat. Very nice and very flat. Uh-oh. <laughs> and glued to the bench. Uh, Here, I was trying to be careful and I forgot about the other side. Uh. There we go. And very nice and very flat. And did I lose any meat here? No, that should sand up beautifully. Okay, so next is bungs and uh, as I've mentioned before, I don't put um, uh, glue on interior bungs. Uh, basically the varnish or finish of whatever I'm putting on here will normally deal with it. never have mentioned how much I like these Durablock sanding blocks. Uh, I get them at a local auto parts store, uh, but they're probably available lots of places, including possibly Amazon. Um, the sandpaper goes on with Velcro. Now, to be fair, there are two versions of these. One is smooth, and you use an adhesive back sandpaper, and I've had a lot of trouble with those because by the time you get it on and you're pushing and you're pushing and it gets warm from friction, that adhesive bonds onto there so well you can't get it off without a heat gun. Anyway, quite annoying. Let me show you how easy it is to change the paper. Comes on a roll. Boom, boom, boom. And you're done. Okay, I've got the doors. Let's see what we can do about a track. So what I'm thinking, basically, the track is going to be um, just made out of a piece of three quarter. And at the bottom, it'll have a quarter inch um, by three quarter uh, trough cut out of it with about a quarter of inch, maybe three eighths 
separation between them and then about that same three quarters and up and over and down and done done easy okay but this gap in the middle here is going to mean that the panels don't come together very close plus the whole thing gets deeper than it needs to be so what i'm going to do i'm actually going to cut a small basically a rabbit out of the door panels so the door panels will come down and they'll sit in here like this and the other one will come down here with a small rabbit out of it and come up and uh, so that they'll come fairly close together now there's a bunch of other ways i could have done this but i think this is about the simplest without giving it too much trouble now you notice there's three doors but only um i'm only showing two tracks and that's because in the layout of the doors there's going to be three doors overlapping but only on two tracks and what will happen is there's actually a staircase here up the companionway this door will actually be fixed so this door can either go all the way that way or all the way that way to open the center and this door can go to the center position so both of these doors can be moved out of the way but this one never moves so i only really need two tracks so if we come back to here um that's basically the idea for the tracks now at the top if we come back up with these uh doors i'm also going to put a little rabbit at the top but you notice the rabbit's a little taller and that's because i have to make the um, grooves in the top track deeper because the way this is going to work I haven't actually drawn this right <laughs> I didn't draw that right and the reason it's important that I draw it right is because that's how you get the tracks in uh, the doors in and out of the tracks they have to be deeper at the top however the doors only come part way into the tracks so that you can lift them up and they come out of the bottom tracks to remove them you've seen lots of doors that work this way sliding doors you basically take the door you lift it up you pull the bottom out and then the whole door can come out well that's what we're doing here all right then so i've set the blade a uh, quarter inch deep and uh, offset by about three eighths of an inch from the center so i'll basically just make successive rips in here in both directions and i'll end up with two troughs in here you will have to move out of the way, I'm afraid, because you're exactly at the outfield. Outfield? Outfeed! Outfeed, outfeed. Okay, so now I'll deepen the depth of the cut for the top rail and um, just carry on in the opposite direction. As this is the last cut on the outside, I'll just work my way to the inside. All right, while doing the ripping, I reconsidered the logic of doing that little notch um, so that the doors come close together. I just made it a quarter of an inch between them and that's plenty strong and um, there'll be a quarter inch gap between the doors. Big deal. Okay, a little sanding to clean these up and we're getting pretty close. I have to make up one more board which will be basically the edge board of the bed um, that will hold the mattress in place and cover the edge of the uh, structure of the bed mount. So this just needs a nice bit of easing on it, which we can do. I'm still on the first disc of this 3M Cubitron and it's still pretty much cutting like new. I would say the possible compromise with this Cubitron is the uh, dust extraction. Even though it is full of holes, um, I'm finding that it isn't exceptional at dust extraction compared to perhaps the Abernet, which is what I've been using before, which is like 99% uh, dust free. 
Now, apparently there's a version of this uh, called Cubitron Extract, uh, which um, has a much higher uh, flow through. Um, it must mean that basically they're just much larger holes, therefore you get less abrasive, but you get more extraction. Anyway, I'm, I'm gonna give it a try. In fact, I put it on my wish list in case anyone would like to help me give it a try. Um, however, uh, this stuff is just fine in the meantime, wow. And then finally I'll turn this into a couple of struts, um, basically at the third point to hold up the structure of the bed. Let's get these safely to the city. And off to town to get these installed. Okay then, let's have a look at what we're up to here. Finny foo, finny foo! Come on back! Come on back! Yes, 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 yes. Okay, 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 that's enough. I gotta get to work, I gotta get to work, I gotta get to work. Okay, we'll see you lots more. Okay. So uh, under the bed, which I made years ago, uh, we just have various storage and everything is just fine, except it'd be much nicer if this was a little prettier, which is what we're working on now. Um, so you can see the first section here is covered by the steps. So that panel will be fixed. Uh, the last section currently has a Finnegan's crate in it. It'll actually move to the center so that the front section uh, is generally closed. The middle section will be open for the period of time that Finnegan's crate is still here. And then uh, at any time after that, that can all be closed. And this will look just lovely. There's some other storage challenges further in, aren't there, Finn, that uh, we'll also be dealing with uh, subsequently. Okay, let's get to work. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so the first step is to remove this piece of strapping I had across here um, that kind of ties it all together and we'll move that back in favor of the new edge piece. Okay, we have a temporary strut here and uh, all right, time to get serious. And we start with the lower track right in here like this. Oh, fabulous. That's the end of that tape measure. Okay, and now the upper track. It's okay, Finny Foo. Okay, 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 okay. Let's try this out. Uh, front track, up and in and down. That one goes all the way back. Next one, uh, rear track. This one goes there. Front track again. This one goes there. Got to figure out some kind of handle for these, but I am very, 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 very pleased with that. Okay, uh, a couple of little things to do, and then the words I have to put the little struts in here because I'm currently relying on a temporary strut. Oh, I like it. And then the trim piece across here, and then of course, the oil. Beauty.
Oh dear. I neglected to bring the flush saw down from uh, General Bay, so uh, the plugs will have to wait here a week. Oh well. Let's put it back together, make sure everything fits as expected. I like it. Let's get some oil on. show I use tongue oil as the base finish for absolutely everything inside and out anywhere because it just brings out the color of Sapele mahogany so beautifully fabulous 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 okay then well hey Finny Finn 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 what do you think of it what do you think of it Finny <laughs> wasn't counting on that okay so absolutely thrilled with the way this turned out can you see past our boy Yes, indeed. Looks lovely. I'm not going to touch it right now to operate any of the panels because they're a bit oily. I've carefully made sure that this doesn't touch anything oily and we have a little bit of work to do there afterwards. So what do you think, Finn? Did this work out pretty well? Did this work out pretty well? <laughs> well, welcome back to the beer of the week. I'm awfully excited about this. Now, this is going to be interesting. Uh, as you may know, um, the three of us have all um, been dry for how long, roughly? Uh, a month -ish. A month and a yeah, bit, like five bit. weeks almost, right? Yeah. yeah. Right? And uh, we're going to celebrate uh, this beer of the week by all having the beer that we've been missing the most. And I'll start. Okay. Because it's Fat Tug. I've done this on the show before, years ago. This is brewed locally at Driftwood Brewery, and it is my go-to lovely beer. It's also a little strong. It's like a nine or something. Seven. Seven? Seven. Yeah. So, it's, you know, for my first beer in five weeks, who knows oh gosh. what'll happen then. <laughs> Ladies Zephyrus, what are you going to go back to? I'm, I'm a wheat beer lover, and this one in particular, which has orange peel and coriander, Garden. It's a go-to. It's a go-to? For summer? Yeah. For spring? For gotcha. yummy times. So I'm going to need a bottle opener. Yes, and which we have right here. <laughs> That's it. And? And I'm having actually a, a Steigl or Steigl Rattler, the lemon flavor. It's so basically juice with a little bit of wheat beer in it. Right. Because you're not really a beer drinker. Not really a beer drinker. Right. Oh, so this yeah. is as close as we get. Yeah. Rattler. We're all going to have wine with dinner later. Yes, well, that's right? true. So which, actually, oh, it's a toss-up for drinks. me. Yeah. It's a toss-up for me between red wine and beer, but it's beer of the week. So, yeah. you know, long time beer later. Okay, let's all dive in. There's a glass for you. There's a glass for you. What a perfect day for the first sort of... Oh, do you need a hand? Oh, yeah. It, it works. It works really... Yeah, just keep going. Just keep going. Just give her. Just give her. Just... There you go. I gotta go to the gym more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, hang on, I'm behind. Oh, that's okay. It's all good. Ben's gonna drink my beer. <laughs> She's like, yeah. Oh, that smells good. Ooh, look at that color. All right. Yay. Okay. Well, cheers to cheers. Uh, cheers. five weeks dry and. Uh, here's to good. Here's mix. to getting back to real. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna say that tastes really good. And yeah, it's really, good. Yeah. It's good. But you know what? what? It's not that different yeah. than our beers. Yeah. It's really? really not. It's like, yeah, there's another beer. I taste a lot in this. Yeah. Different. Uh, but, but Fat Dog is a pretty strong beer. Yeah. It's also very, very hoppy, which some of the, the nears can't really seem to do. That's Maybe true. what we need to do is next time is put a near beside a real. And what see what we happens. have to do that. I've what I want to do is. Put, yeah, exactly. Especially some of the ones that were really successful. I, the Corona, I gotta say. Oh, right? the best. This kind of tastes like the Corona. <laughs> Can I taste it? Yeah. It's really not that different. That's beer? <laughs> I know. 
Did you get the light? It's good. <laughs> it's yummy. It's really That's yummy. really good. But, but it's yeah, not it really is strong. quite light. Can I try your red? Yeah, of course. It's just like juicier. You'll hate it. Cool it. <laughs> it's not cool aid. <laughs> you can try if you like it. It's lemon? Very juicy, yeah. Yeah. Kind of tastes like a. Oh, it's very lemony. Yeah. yeah. Tastes like lemon brine pie. Yes. It does. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bit of an indulgence. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, we have to give away a t shirt. Uh, last week's Wonder Visit Travels Jordy t shirt is Daryl Gardner 2680. Uh, congratulations. Get a hold of me and we'll make sure you get your shirt. Cheers. Oh, cheers. Oh, yeah, cheers. Any excuse to cheers. Cheers, any excuse to cheers. Cheers, cheers, cheers. We cheers each other as well as everyone else in the world. So, what was your takeaway with five weeks drive? It wasn't hard. Yeah. It wasn't hard at all. Yeah. It wasn't difficult. It was a little bit boring. Yeah. I thought that was the ultimate. Certain social things would have yeah. been nicer. Well, I think going out to a restaurant or going out, there's certain like things that you want to pair together. Yeah. yeah. And wine is probably the thing that I missed a little bit there. It was Red like, wine oh, why go out? You can't yeah. really. Yeah. There are reason, reasonable near beers, but there's no reasonable near wines. No. Yeah. They They're don't horrible. exist. Yeah. yeah. But there's some great mocktails out there. There oh. are some great. Yeah. Some yeah. good ones. No okay. doubt about it. And what about that 21 day rush? That intellectual burst that we were all told we'd get that that I burst of energy and I would say I slept better yeah yeah I, I slept way better and funny, I woke up better really yeah if anything I would say sleep was the best but I mean yeah. it wasn't markedly better but um, right. I, yeah. I don't know if I noticed that but so I certainly didn't notice any other sort of burst of energy well, or, yeah. and I think during the day I had better concentration maybe oh, yeah okay well like then that that's credible Definitely. that that is a thing yeah. Well, you'll know if the inverse is true. Well, Although I, I won't be able to concentrate yeah. for <laughs> ten more minutes. I'll be. But I have a feeling, at least for me, I'm probably going to drink about half what I drank before. Yeah, I but, think. But less for me. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I don't because there's so many good things out there that yeah. don't have alcohol. And just tasty and you don't miss yummy it. and yeah. why? Why? Yeah. yeah. Why would you exactly? Less calories. Less. Way less. That's the thing you don't know about these near beers. Significantly less calories. Way yeah. less calories in them. Yeah, half or two. And if you can't drink beer, like you can't drink beer, nope. but you can drink the nears. No nears, I can drink. Or whatever no it is. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah. That yeah. is weird. Yeah, yeah, it's really bizarre. In terms of, maybe we don't. Maybe it's too much information to talk about why you can't drink beer. <laughs> yeah, we'll leave that to the audience. I'll leave that. <laughs> anyway, so it was a great experience. Um, it certainly saves a lot of money in bars. That's true. Yes. Uh, yeah. Eating out is a lot cheaper. Eating in is. is a lot cheaper. Overall, I'd say it yeah. was a super experience. I think also gained uh, appreciation of sobriety and how hard it can be because yeah. it can make you feel really left out if there's no dry the social thing. Yeah, options. yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's true. Definitely. But it is getting way easier. Way, that e way. exactly. Yeah, and that's which is a really great. Thing Every place like, that we eat regularly, yeah. full of mocktails yeah. and and super near beers options. and yeah, and, and near, super even near beers on tap now. Too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's just going to explode. I think it's yeah. going to be more and more. Yeah, I heard the millennials talking about having mocktails and <laughs> buying well, all. Oh, yeah, we were somewhere cool. exactly. And so, yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's like, so everybody's doing it. Okay, <laughs> then. Good experience all around, then. Fantastic. Let, let's uh, have some drinks and then have some dinner and some wine. <laughs> yeah. cheers, to, cheers to all that. I'll just fall asleep. <laughs> yeah. How many times can I say cheers? Well, I can say it at least once more because the word of the week this week will be. Cheers. You know what to Cheers. do with it. See you next week. <laughs>